Good morning, and welcome to Walk Before You Run. Turn to John 4. Verse 5 says, Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Shekar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well. And it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, asketh me, ask a drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria. For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that said to thee, Give me drink, thou wouldest, thou wouldest have asked of him and would have given thee living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, Thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in, a, in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus said unto her, Go call, call thy husband and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that saith thou truly. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worship in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet in, at Galilee worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I that speaketh unto you am he. And upon this came his disciples and marvel that he talked with the woman, yet no man said, What seeketh thou? Or why talkest thou with her? The woman then left her water pot and went away into her city and said to the men, Come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed, prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Therefore, said the disciples one to another, Hath any man brought him aught to eat? Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. I want to stop there and drop down to 39, but I would love it if you would go and read the rest of that. But 39 says, And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman which testified, he told me all that ever I did. So when the Samaritans were come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them. And he abode there two days. 
and many more believed because of his own word and said unto the woman, now we believe not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves and know that this is indeed the Christ, the savior of the world. I wanted to read all of that because I said that I wanted to talk about shame and a shame. Now, I love this woman at the well because she was going about her business. She wasn't bothering anybody at the moment. She was doing what she was supposed to do and she was going to go draw water. But I love the fact that sometimes when you're not even looking to run into to Jesus, you're going to run into him. And um, and what I like about her is he told her about herself and those things that he told her about herself should have made her so uh, shame that she should have, you know, hidden herself, walked away been too embarrassed to even stand there and listen. Maybe while he was talking to her, should could have been just thinking about, oh, how embarrassing is this? Oh, I am so shamed. But instead of standing there with her mind just whirling with the shame, she was listening to the words of someone who could do something about the shame that she possessed. And so when I was thinking about her, I looked up the word shame and ashamed. Ashamed means to be embarrassed or guilty because of your actions, characteristics, or your association. And then to be reluctant to do something through fear of that embarrassment or being humiliated. Then shame means a painful feeling of humiliation or distress caused by the consciousness of wrong or foolish behavior. So she probably was shame because she realized or he had her to look back on her, her foolish and wrong behavior of being with this man and that man and that man and that man. But I don't know the circumstances of why she had been with so many that's, I don't even care. That's not my business. I'm going to say like my niece uh, used to say when she was here, she used to say, do you? And so that's what I do. I do me. So I can't dwell on what she did because I have enough shame to concentrate for myself. And uh, so I looked at her and I thought about, she went beyond being shame to go and share this good news with somebody. Sometimes we allow being ashamed to uh, stop us in our tracks, make us hide, make us not go out and be bold for the Lord, make us not do things because we worried that somebody is going to remind us of what we did in the past. But this woman wasn't worried about what somebody was going to say to her about what she had done in the past because she had a bright future to offer the people that would listen because she ran to the town and she went and she said, come see a man who can tell you about everything that you have done in your life. Now prophets usually told you about what was going to take place in the future. But what this man did for her, he not only told her about what she had done in the past, but he also told her about her future. And so um, she went to go share this good news to let them know that the Christ was there. The one who was coming to save them, who was going to be there for them was there. And she wanted them to come and get a taste of what she had just experiencing, experienced by meeting him. And so when you are feeling guilty or embarrassed about some action or something that you've done, don't be reluctant to do something for Christ because of what you have done in the past. Don't worry about that God, because God isn't worried about it. Christ wasn't worried about it. This very same Samaritan woman who went running to go and tell them, come see a man, ended up being one of the women who followed him and ministered to him, you know, throughout his ministry. And so uh, we're still talking about her, you know, over 2000 years later. And so don't allow 
something that you've done in your past that you might be ashamed of, that you that brings shame upon you. Don't let those things stop you from walking out and doing what God would have you to do and being a mighty, powerful woman or man of God, because you know, I mean, who knows? You don't. If maybe uh, 2000 years from now, somebody is going to be talking about the great good news you share with them. Maybe it won't be 2000 years from now. Maybe it be next week, next month, next year. Maybe it be today, but don't allow shame to stop you from sharing the good news of Christ because he can use you just like he used that Samaritan woman to share the good news of the gospel of Christ, that he is here for us all. So you don't have to worry about uh, the bad things that you've done in your past, keeping you from glorifying God. Because uh, I, I look at this Samaritan woman, I think about Rahab. You know, if 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 they can bring glory to God through their lives, what's stopping me and you? Because you have to remember that Moses, we talk about him leading the children of Israel, getting the Ten Commandments from God on a tablet. We talk about the great things that he did in his life. But don't forget, Moses killed somebody. He was a murderer. And then he, you know, he was a fugitive. So don't worry about what you've done in the past, letting that stop you from being so um, well used by God in your future. Think about David. David was an adulterer, but God used him and God said he was a man after his own heart. So don't let Satan try to make shame be your shield, your wall that keeps you from doing what God would have you to do. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, remember, there were some things that I didn't read in John 4. You need to go back and take a look at those things because it will bring even more light to what's going on. Because God had, um, God had favor on this woman and Jesus turned his attention to her and was busy thinking and, and uh, about her and what he wanted to pour into her life. When the disciples, these men who had been following him and being with him came, was trying to minister to him. Jesus was not even interested in being ministered to at that moment because he was doing the ministering and he was ministering unto this woman because he knew that she was going to go and uh, be the reason why many, many men came to him. I'll see you next time. Remember to walk in his word before you run out and enjoy your day. And remember that you are a blessing. So make sure you go and be a blessing to someone else. And I love what my friend just said. She said, let go and let God. So let go of the shame and let God do a mighty work in your life. I'll see you next time.